Just how much is one billion? If you type the letter A a thousand times on a sheet of paper, you would need one million pages to make a billion. The largest passenger airplane, the Airbus A380, has a maximum seating capacity of 853. It would take almost 1.2 million of the super jumbo jets to carry a billion people. In 2010, Shanghai was reported to be the world's largest city by population, with over 23 million people. You would need over 43 Shanghais to accommodate 1 billion residents. If you had 1 billion frequent flyer miles, you could fly around the world 40,000 times at the equator, or fly round trip to the moon 4,100 times, or fly to and from the sun 10 times with miles left over. If you started counting now, it would take you about 32 years to count 1 billion seconds, over 1900 years to count 1 billion minutes. 1 billion seems like a big number, and many believe that the planet Earth is not just 1, but over 4 billion years old. But if the Earth is billions of years old, then how could scientists have detected carbon-14 and diamonds deep in the Earth, an element that only lasts thousands of years? And if the Earth is billions of years old, then the Earth's magnetic field should have long ago depleted its energy. But we still live on a very lively planet. If you think about it, a 1 billion year old planet doesn't match the scientific data. But more than that, 1 billion cannot even come close to describing how big our creator is. Just how old is the universe? Well, it doesn't have an expiration tag, but we can make some estimates by looking at things in our universe, like the moon. As the moon orbits the Earth, its gravity pulls on the oceans, causing tides. And as the tides pull on the moon, they cause it to move about an inch and a half away from the Earth each year. That means that 6,000 years ago, the moon would have been about 800 feet closer to the Earth. Not a problem. But if the Earth and Moon were over 4 billion years old, then they would have been touching, and that wouldn't have been good. So the Moon shows that the universe is several thousand years old. That makes sense when we also look at comets. They lose large amounts of material each time they pass around the Sun, so they wouldn't even be around after billions of years. And the inner regions of spiral galaxies rotate pretty fast. If the galaxies and the universe altogether were billions of years old, they'd be too twisted up to look like they do now. So everywhere we look in the universe, we see evidence that shows that what the Bible says about its age is consistent and that the heavens really do declare the glory of the Lord. Each year, it's fun to celebrate birthdays. And to be certain of our age, we can always check our birth certificate. But can any reliable methods determine the age of an object without a historical record? Radiocarbon dating measures the ratio of radioactive carbon-14 to stable carbon-12 in an organic artifact like wood or bone. The method assumes how much carbon-14 was present when the tree or animal died and how fast carbon-14 decays in order to calculate how old something is. Because carbon-14 completely decays in thousands of years, it should only be useful to date objects no more than tens of thousands of years old. However, using this method, scientists determined that samples from U.S. coal beds conventionally dated at 40 to 329 million years had carbon ages of 48,000 to 50,000 years. Diamonds are said to be billions of years old, but they still have carbon-14 in them, and return to ages of about 55,000 carbon years. And supposedly millions of years old dinosaur bones and other fossils show dates in the tens of thousands of carbon years. Radioisotope and radiocarbon ages can clearly contradict one another, so how can we know which method to trust? Measuring isotopes is very accurate, but the assumptions needed to convert those measurements into ages can't be verified. After all, how can anyone today verify how much of each isotope was in a rock or fossil when it formed long ago, or that no isotopes entered or left? Carbon-14 and radioisotope dates rarely match an object's real calendar age. But because the Bible is like a birth certificate for the world, resolving Earth's age is a piece of cake.
Walk into any natural history museum and you're likely to see an enormous T-Rex skeleton staring you in the face. Of course, unlike Hollywood movies like Jurassic Park, the dinosaurs we see today are just fossils. Paleontologists dig up all kinds of fossils, mostly just small bones or seashells. But occasionally, they discover unusual fossils, like squid with ink, lizards with skin, or even a T-Rex with blood. That's what scientists uncovered in Montana in 1990. Bones with soft blood vessels inside. And when they examined the blood vessels in the lab, they found dinosaur blood cells. Other discoveries around the world include fossils with hair, feathers, and even skin, which makes a paleontologist scratch his head because things like skin and blood can only last thousands of years. And what about that squid fossil? In 2009, scientists found a dried ink sac inside. When they made the ink wet, they were actually able to write with it. A lot of scientists insist that dinosaur fossils are many millions of years old. But the facts of science tell a different story, that squid with ink and lizards with skin and dinosaurs with gooey blood vessels can only have been buried a short time. Which is exactly what the Bible has said all along. Because God created all living things, including man, just a few thousand years ago. Even that enormous T-Rex at the museum. Are dinosaurs in the Bible? Well, the word dinosaur didn't come about until Sir Richard Owen coined it in 1841. But the book of Job in the Bible does refer to a massive creature that God called behemoth, which had a tail like a cedar tree. Sounds like a sauropod dinosaur. God also said he made behemoth at the same time he made humans, which makes a lot of sense when you think about all the dragon legends from around the world. After all, what people called dragons were probably dinosaurs before the word dinosaur existed. St. George fought a dragon, so did Alexander the Great's army, and Marco Polo saw one while visiting China. In fact, Chinese historians feature dragons alongside other known animals in the Chinese zodiac. Cave drawings, tapestries, and carvings on other continents also show people and dinosaur-like creatures side by side. That makes sense, since scientists have found original soft tissues, like blood vessels and red blood cells, in dinosaur bones. Lab tests have shown that these kinds of materials break down quickly, so these dinosaur bones can't be very old. As the Bible says, and science confirms, dinosaurs weren't here before humans. They lived at the same time, because they were created on the same day. If you're heading to the Grand Canyon for vacation this year, don't be surprised if you run into a few crowds. Nearly 5 million people from all over the world visit this wonder of nature every year. That's over 100 times more people than when the park officially opened in 1919. Researchers also come to the 277-mile canyon to study the spectacular rock formations, fossils, and archaeological discoveries. Scientists still debate how long it took for the canyon to form, with many insisting that it took several million years for the Colorado River to carve its way through. But other geologists think it's much younger, and another famous North American landmark shows why. In 1982, just two years after Mount St. Helens erupted, another seismic episode in the area shook loose the unstable rock and created a fast-moving mud flow that carved a canyon near the mountain's base. Scientists have called it the Little Grand Canyon because it looks like a 1 40th scale model of Arizona's Grand Canyon. What's amazing about the Little Grand Canyon is that it formed quickly through a small catastrophic event. Scientists now see how larger canyons, like Grand Canyon, could be quickly created through a massive catastrophic event, like the global flood of Noah's day. And that's something to think about while you're dodging the crowds at the Grand Canyon to get a glimpse of this magnificent monument to the power of our Creator.